Hello, future Rossies and pre-med explorers. This is Milena Garcia, your host for Ross University Checking the Pulse, a pre-med podcast. This is our mini podcast featuring facts and information about our medical program, insights from current students, and tips from practicing physicians. Each week, this podcast will be broken down in small episodes, focusing on one aspect of our program, also having guests talk about their own experiences as students and as doctors. Welcome back to our Ross University podcast, everybody. This week, we will be talking about the Medical Education Readiness Program, also known as MERP. We will cover what the program is, how long it is, where it is, the coursework included, and how it helps students to be successful in medical school. My guest today is Kevin Neeson, our executive advisor. Kevin, hi. Oh, hi, Milena. How are you? Hello. How are, I'm well. How are you? I'm doing great. Very nice to see you. Good to see you. Did I interrupt? I was just doing a little light reading, uh, you know, in my vast collection of leather-bound books here in my library. <laughs> About medical education, I see. I didn't realize we were going to be on camera today, so you took me by surprise. <laughs> oh. How convenient that I caught you at a good time, looking good for the camera. All right. Uh, well, I appreciate you taking your time to, to speak to us about the Medical Education Readiness Program. Let's start with who you are. Let's do a quick introduction of yourself, please. Sure. My name is Kevin Neeson. I work in the admissions department at Ross University School of Medicine. And one part of my role with Ross University is to work as the admissions coordinator for students who are accepted into our medical education readiness program, or MERP. Which is what we're going to be talking about here. So I appreciate it. And so what is MERP? Tell us about it. Sure. Uh, MERP is a 15-week medical school preparatory program that's focused on preparing uh, pre-med students for success in medical school. So when a student applies to Ross University School of Medicine, our, our admissions committee will review their application and they would either offer them direct admission into our medical program, deny their, their application, or offer them a spot in the MERP program. So if they see some kind of potential in their application, mm -hmm. but there's something in their file that might indicate to them that they would benefit from a little bit uh, a little bit more preparation before going into first semester, they would offer them an opportunity in MERP. When did that program get started? It's been around, it's actually started the first semester that I started working at Ross University, which was fall of 2004. Um, so right when I started working here, I was the coordinator for the MERP program right from the get-go, and I've been doing that ever since. So 16 years of preparing thousands of students for success at Ross University. And where's the program located uh, and how long is it? It's a 15 week program. So the, the same length is a semester at Ross University. Um, it is located, we have two locations actually. The main location is in Miramar, Florida. Uh, that's when we are live uh, doing in-person uh, lectures. Uh, COVID-19 ha has postponed that a little bit when we have gone online for the past two semesters. Mm -hmm. Uh, but when we are live, we have two campuses, the main campus in Miramar, Florida, which is right in between um, Fort Lauderdale and Miami in South Florida. And that's where the live lectures take place. And we have a second location for our Canadian students that's in Toronto. Um, so they attend via the, a, a remote feed, uh, a two-way feed where the students have, can watch the live lectures that are taking place in Miramar. Um, and they're able to, to interact and take part in those lectures uh, through that two-way feed. How many starts date per year does our program have? Uh, just as the medical program at Ross University, there are three start dates for MERP. Um, they're run off cycle from the medical school. So they start a month earlier and they end a month earlier um, so that students, when they're done with MERP, they can go directly into the medical program at Ross uh, without having a, to wait a full semester. So for MERP, the, the semesters start in, uh, in uh, December, April, and August. What's the typical class size? of the the and are, are they different with the different term starts yeah i mean they're different for, from year to year and from semester to semester uh, when the program started it was actually pretty small back in 2004 but uh, typical class sizes now would probably range anywhere from from 80 and we've had classes to uh, as large as 160 students um, 
typical probably being somewhere in between the, the 80 and 160. Um, but yeah, fall, fall, the August session is always the largest of the three. Um, April, April is probably the, the smallest of the three. And I know I always get asked this uh, when the students get selected for MERP and they look at the, the course descriptions and they say, but I already took this class. Can you cover what the courses are and how they're different from the pre-med courses that the students may have already taken? Yeah, so th there's four lecture lecture based uh, fundamental science courses in MERP, uh, about 50 hours of lecture for each subject. Uh, the main subjects being medical anatomy, medical biochemistry, medical physiology, and medical microbiology. And, and they're definitely going to be more in depth than, than courses that are taught at an undergraduate level. Um, maybe 75, 80% the, the pace of medical school. But uh, yeah, definitely uh, not your typical undergraduate science course. These are going to be, it's going to be a lot more detail. Um, it's going to be a lot more rigorous than, than anything that students have experienced coming in. And, and how are the students graded during the program? They are, there's, uh, the majority of their grade is going to come from two mini exams and a final exam that are given a third of the way, you know, one third of the way, two thirds of the way, and then at the end of the semester. Um, that's the bulk of their grades, but we, we have a, a, a 10 quizzes that are spread out over the semester, which make up a small part of the student's grade, but they're really there so students can be, have constant evaluation. We, we don't want to, them to wait until the, the first mini to find out that they're, they're not keeping up with the material. So we, we have those regular assessments. And then they're also broken up into small groups to, to prepare them for some of the problem-based learning that they'll do in medical school. Mm -hmm. Um, we they get a small part a small part of their grade is based on those those uh, small group sessions. And you know I've worked with you for so long. I'm also a strong believer of the program because I've seen the success uh, and the student success through the program. But can you name some of the major benefits that you see that the students get by going through our MERP program? Right. I would say probably four main. Uh, objectives for the program. Uh, the first being obviously to give students strong training to prepare them for the basic sciences of medical school. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, there's a, we want to provide a learning environment, environment where students are guided by instructors on how to optimize study and performance strategies um, and provide uh, regular assessment. And then finally, which is kind of an overlooked uh, objective, but now, helping students to build a strong social network going into medical school. Mm -hmm. um, th those students who are in MERP have, uh, you know, they usually have their study groups, they, they have their, uh, you know, their support system going into med school. And I think that's, that's helpful for them making the adjustment when they, when they do go down to Barbados. Yeah, that's a really good point to bring up. Thanks for saying that. It's something that I often hear from the, the current students or the incoming students into first semester of medical school. I do too, yeah. The other students are always pretty jealous of the, uh, the MERPers. <laughs> <laughs> they come in with their group already pretty tight. Mm -hmm. yep. and what's, what's a typical day for a MERP uh, student while they're going through it? S students are gonna have two lectures per day. Um, when we're live on campus, those lectures start at eight o'clock and 10 o'clock a.m. Uh, so they'll be out of their, their mandatory lectures at around noon every day. Uh, but in addition to those mandatory lectures, there's usually some kind of a supplemental session that's held in the afternoon. The times for those afternoon sessions can, can vary a little bit from day to day and from week to week. Um, but those could be an academic success session, a review session, or a, a small group session. So two lectures per day out of lecture at noon, and then usually something else scheduled in the afternoon, depending on the day. And besides the sun and humidity in Florida and the snow in Toronto, is it the same schedule for both of the classes? Yep, same schedule. Um, even when we're online, uh, as we are now during COVID, um, there are, the lectures are still mandatory. The students have to be at the live lecture, no matter where they are in the country. We pushed them back a couple of hours for the West Coast folks. Mm -hmm. um, they still have to be logged onto their computer and, and at those lectures um, at 10 o'clock Eastern time and noon Eastern time. 
And as you said, the main purpose of the program is for students to be successful. Can you maybe give some examples of what kind of support, uh, both academic and psychological, do we give the students while they're going through MERP? Sure. Well, for, for academic, um, there is a, a big focus on um, academic support in the MERP program. Um, in addition to, to the teaching of this very rigorous material, that there is a lot of focus on giving the students the help that they might need, um, helping them to develop uh, time management techniques, test taking strategies, um, note taking strategies, memorization strategies, uh, data interpretation, um, all skills that students are gonna need to have going into med school. There, there's a pretty big focus in MERP on making sure students are, uh, are comfortable in those areas. And who are the faculty teaching the program? So the, the, uh, the professors for MERP are, all have MDs or, or PhDs in their field. Um, they're, they're all have done extensive research and have published numerous peer reviewed manuscripts and in journals. Um, so the, the, the faculty is very experienced, very knowledgeable in their subject matter. Um, but in addition to the, the faculty members, we also have teaching fellows. And the teaching fellows in MERP are usually former Ross students. So they've already completed their MD and they're, they're just waiting to go into residency and they just want to, to make good use of that time. Um, they'll, oftentimes they've, they've gone through MERP as well. So they're familiar with the program um, and they wanna do something to, to give back to those students who are coming into to the program. So they'll, they'll work as uh, teaching fellows and they're the ones who are gonna run the, the uh, lecture reviews, um, provide practice questions for students, hold office hours, um, you know, help with, with the guidance that they might need when they're working in the, the dry anatomy lab. Um, so they're, they're the, really the, the first line of support for students. What about housing? Yes, please. <laughs> so <laughs> what about for the students? Where do, we, where, where do they live while they're in Florida or under normal circumstances for the Florida and the Toronto? Sure. Uh, so yeah, for, students are responsible for finding their own housing accommodations while they're in MERP. But we do help them by giving them access to a database that we've compiled. So that, that, that database is actually accessible through the MERP website. If you go on medschoolprep.com under student resources, there's a link on there where students can go on. They can look at pictures and descriptions and prices. There's a map so they can kind of see wh where these places are located near campus. And uh, they'll have that reserved and, and ready for them when they arrive in, in South Florida. And uh, same for, well, in Toronto, there's actually some a limited amount of student housing um, so if students want to live in a dorm uh, where, the, where the program is held, um, those units are, uh, are rented out on a first come first serve basis. Um, but in, in addition to those on campus housing in Toronto, we, we also have a, a housing database for that area as well. That's the list of questions I had for you. Any last minute suggestions or advice to our future Rossies? I would say if you apply to Ross and you're offered a spot in the MERP program, just to, to really think of it as an opportunity. You know, this program has a, a long track record of success. I, I, I'm here over and over from students who have gone through this program, um, how much they've benefited from, from, from attending. They, you know, maybe at, at times they, they kind of wish they got direct admission, but once they go through MERP, I always hear, Kevin, I am so glad that I went through that program. It really helped me to, uh, to be a better student and be much better prepared to going into Ross University. I echo that. It's been my same experience um, as well. And Kevin, one last question for you. How many of those books behind you have you really read? Um, well, there's no titles on them, so I, I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head which ones. <laughs> I, uh, I've read those green ones, the, the red ones over here. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, thank you so much for taking your time. I really appreciate it. I think this was a good opportunity uh, for the, the future Rossies to learn a little bit more about uh, this great program, this four-month prep program that we have. Again, medschoolprep.com.
and, um, and it gives the, uh, the students a chance to be accepted into directly into our medical program. So thank you very much. I appreciate you taking your time. It was my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Be safe. Back to my reading. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you for listening to Ross University Checking the Pulse, a pre med podcast. This is Milena Garcia, your host. This podcast is made for you, so let me know what topics you want us to cover on future episodes. You can send me your comments, feedbacks, and requests to mgarcia at rossu.edu. Definitely follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and our YouTube channel at Ross Med School or on Facebook. If you're listening to this podcast on iTunes, I am working my way to five stars, so remember to send me your comments and let me know your ideas. If you're on Spotify, remember to click on the follow button to get our future episodes. All right. See you future Rossies and Pre-Med Explorers next week.